قرآن يهدي وسيف يحمي ولا رب سوى الله The rebels of the Allied Democratic Forces have a reputation of being merciless towards civilians. Their brutality was unleashed in a recent attack in Kamango town in eastern DRC that saw thousands of refugees fleeing to Uganda. One of the people I talked to is the late cousin, and unfortunately he's not around. We talked about several things. One of them was the war, which he himself was involved in for a very long time. And I was told by him that he has never seen people who are resilient as the people in the ADF among the forces he has fought against. The rebel group was formed in 1996 by discontented tabliks in remnants of National Army for the Liberation of Uganda to topple the government for reportedly marginalizing tabliks. According to the army, the ADF remains a threat despite its reduced troop numbers. The ADF has been recruiting and they are preparing for war. We have this for a fact and we, we are preparing as well. The rebels' latest attack on Congolese soldiers in eastern DRC left over 60,000 people displaced. The situation forced the UPDF to deploy along the Uganda-Congo border in Vundibujo district. And we are, we are confident that should they attempt to cross the border, we will deal with them thoroughly well. And they, they have seen this before. We have done this before. They know it, that they can't defeat us, at least militarily. The UPDF spokesperson says the rebels have two choices, either accept talks to end the protracted rebellion or face lethal fire. So we, we are engaging with uh, the Kabila government in Kinshasa to the effect that we would like them to take action working with the, with the neutral international force that is now part of MONUSCO, of the UN mission in DRC. We haven't considered the option of crossing into the DRC. Uh, peace process, you know, would be essential to listen to whatever uh, voices uh, there are against uh, and concerns uh, people might have about uh, how their countries are being managed, how the DRC question can be dealt with. I think for as long as there is will across these countries that I've mentioned, solutions will be found. I, I, I can never doubt the imagination of human beings to overcome whatever challenges we find before us. But critically, we need to talk hard stuff about the economics of that war and the instability, the, the, the benefits that an unstable DRC will be to some neighbors and also international players. That for me is critical. Peace defeats war and it is cheapened. I'm expecting the ADF also to issue a statement about their commitment to peace because there is no future in the armed option by either party, by government or ADF. The second, the, the second thing would be of course to appoint a mediator and I think I'm calling, I would actually now call upon the, the International Conference on the Great Lakes Region, which is a body charged with, with this responsibility based in Bujumbola, uh, in Burundi, uh, uh, then to link up with them and then get the, and, and, and the United Nations then would come in uh, to get a neutral mediator. The UPDF say the rebels estimated to be about 500 would be no more if the Congolese government allowed them to pursue them in their soil. However, some analysts believe that proposal is a sinister move by the UPDF to invade its neighbor in DRC. I really would never advocate for a military solution. I do think dialogue is increasingly important. But dialogue can only happen if you are listening to one another. If you, are, if you yourself is not a, a warmonger, you know, 
I think the history of some of our leaders is very clear. They prefer a military approach to a lot of the problems. There are a number of youths who have been lured into the rebellion after being told that they're going to get jobs in Eastern DRC, in copper mines, only to end up in the bush, under training. So you, you have to deal with a whole lot of factors, including unemployment, including fighting poverty in the regions that make the youth vulnerable so that you can deny them the ability to get the means to make war. Some of the analysts argued that the war on ADF could have already ended, but the UPDF continues to buy time in order to justify some of the unclassified expenditures or budgets. Now recently you heard that uh, the Minister of uh, Defence, Putin, I think, uh, was trying to defend the budget of in excess of trillions, you know, one point something trillion, and um, talking about um, the possible threats of uh, regional instability. The ADF is a real threat to Uganda, and we have never taken them for granted. <laughs> They are fears that the existence of the ADF extremists may attract more sympathizers given their radical Islamic teachings that have gained quite a following in the Middle East countries. <laughs> NTV.